this uh, section we will talk about the characteristic features of a respiratory surface. Respiratory surface is the area through which the gaseous exchange is going to take place. So what should be the property or what should be the properties of that surface area? So characteristics of respiratory surface or ultimately that surface area would be present in the organ which is going to help in respiration. Number one, because gaseous exchange has to take place, it should be very thin. And then when we come to the organs, we'll see whether they fulfill these characteristics or not. So it should be very thin. Second, the gaseous exchange takes place through liquid medium. That means when oxygen dissolves in water, then only the dissolved oxygen is taken in. So the surface area should always be moist. In most of the cases, the area is kept moist with the help of mucus. Next property, it should be highly vascular. Vascular means there should be sufficient blood supply because in the previous uh, video we saw that exchange of gases when take place, it is the blood in higher organisms which is actually going to transport this uh, oxygen or respiratory gases. So if there is more blood supply, more gaseous exchange is possible. If some respiratory pigment is present, then that is going to help. So presence of respiratory pigments which can bind with oxygen or carbon dioxide and help in their transport. And the last one is large surface area. If a, if a surface or an organ fulfills these properties, then that is considered as perfect area for gaseous exchange or for respiratory exchange. It should be extremely thin so that the gases can easily diffuse. It should be moist because oxygen is going to di uh, dissolve in mucus and then that dissolved oxygen is taken in. Highly vascular, more blood supply would ensure more exchange. If there is a pigment which can transport these gases as soon as they are come into the blood, that would also enhance the re rate of respiration. And larger surface area. Larger the area, more would, would be the exchange. Now here we will also discuss about few pigments which are present. Certain pigments uh, we normally talk of and there are few which are not so commonly discussed. The first is hemoglobin. Which is the iron containing pigment and it is found in uh, human beings but in our case it is found in RBCs whereas in case of lower uh, animals like in earthworm it is found dissolved in plasma. So uh, it is iron containing red colored pigment. The next one hemoerythrin. It is also iron containing red pigment and it is found in annelida or the members of annelida phylum. Similarly, hemocyanin, it is a copper containing blue pigment which is found in mollusks, in the members of mollusca. One more pigment is echinochrome. This is also iron containing pigment and as the name says echino, this is found in the members of echinodermata or in echinoderms. 
Similarly, there are a few more pigments like vanadium. As the name tells us, it has element vanadium and it is found in silomic fluid of protocordates. Silomic fluid of protocordates. So these are few uh, pigments which bind with respiratory gases. So these are the characteristic features which must be shown by any surface area so that it can be termed as respiratory area. And these are certain pigments which are uh, found in various uh, groups of uh, organisms or animals and they help in transport of gases. Now let us see the various organs which help in respiration. Let us now talk about the organs. There are various uh, organs or structures which help in respiration and depending upon that, a name is given to that type of respiration. First organ is skin and if skin helps in respiration, then that respiration is known as cutaneous respiration and it is seen in ortho and frogs. We will discuss this in detail when we come to uh, cutaneous respiration. So skin is the organ which is helping in respiration. In uh, insects or in arthropods, tracheary system is present. So the organ which help are called trachea. These are chitinous tubes and so the name given to the respiration is tracheal or tracheary respiration and it is seen in insects like cockroaches and all. If the respiratory structure is gill or are gills then the respiration is known as branchial respiration and gills we know are found in fishes and some other organisms like amongst arthropods also uh, which are prawn like arthropods they also have so fishes prawns etc next lungs as respiratory structure so if lungs are the respiratory structure then the name given to the respiration is pulmonary pulmonary respiration and this is seen in higher vertebrates higher vertebrates like starting from uh, frogs that is amphibians then reptiles birds mammals and higher ones we'll take some more structures which are seen there is something called book lungs book lungs are found in scorpions and spiders. Similarly, one more structure, they are called book gills. Book gills. They are found in aquatic arachnids like limulus. So depending upon uh, the name, uh, we can have certain name to the respiratory uh, systems or it can just be the structure. One more structure which is found is called pulmonary sac. And this is actually modified mental cavity which is found in mollusks. So these are various respiratory organs. In case of uh, skin, we just now talked about the characteristic features of any respiratory surface. In earthworms, 
The skin acts as a respiratory organ and we know that the skin is very thin in case of earthworms. It is always kept moist and it is highly vascular. Plus, in earthworms, hemoglobin, that is the pigment is also present and it is dissolved in plasma. That means this is the structure which fits into uh, the respiratory surface category because it fulfills all the properties. We will be discussing these uh, various types of respirations in detail also. But structure wise, if respiratory structure is skin, then cutaneous respiration. If these are trachea, which are tubes, chitinous tubes, then it is known as tracheal. Gills as respiratory structure, then we call it branchial respiration. And if lungs are the respiratory structures, then it is known as pulmonary respiration. And these are certain other organs or structures which help in gaseous exchange or respiration. So from the next segment, we will start discussing these uh, types of respirations in